Hi, hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see about the Wipro NLTH programming questions which was asked on day 1 and day 2 of Wipro NLTH exam. I have previously solved around 12 to 14 programming questions in my previous video. So kindly do go and check that. I have attached the link in the description. Why I am saying is that those programming questions were repeated on day 1 and day 2 of Wipro NLTH exam. So kindly go and check that because uh, those programming questions are being repeated in the morning slot or afternoon slot and some programming questions are not yet asked. So it may be asked on uh, day 3 of Wipro NLTH exam. So in this video we are going to discuss about two programming questions which are asked in the morning batch of day 2 exam. So let's get into today's topic. See the first program. I don't have the exact question, but I will explain you what they ask. So they have asked write an algorithm to help the community find the count of unique authors initial present in the given batch of books. So they have given the paragraph like that an online book reading community something some authors will be there. You have to find the unique number of uh, authors initials in that. So they will be given this string. You have to find the unique number of authors in this. For example, A is repeated thrice but yes you see it is repeated only once so that is an unique character in this string so you have to count that number of unique characters in the given string and print the count as the output so they have given like this and uh, this is the example they have given so they have given the string like this so a s f d d a g h a so in this how many unique characters are there so first uh, s is an unique character s if and uh, f is an unique character G and H. So these four characters are unique characters. So if you count these unique characters, four you will get. That is the output of this program. How we are going to do this approach means first take this first character A. Compare with next character S. It is equal? No, it is not equal. F. It is equal? Not equal. D and uh, you are going to go on checking uh, with this other characters like this. So D not equal, D not equal. A it is equal. So if A equal to A means we are uh, first initially we will declare one count variable as c is equal to 0. If a equal to equal to a means we will be changing the value of c to 1 and we will be breaking this condition. So that it not gets incremented to the unique characters. Next we will go to the s character. So s will be checked with all the other characters. So if s is uh, checked with a means it is not equal. s is not going we should not check the same character with that same character itself that is the same position. So this is 0th position. This is 1st position. 1st position should not be checked with 1st position. For that what we are going to give, give is that if index of i equal to equal to j means we will continue this. So in this and all in program I will explain it clearly so that you will get understand. Now just uh, understand the logic alone. So s will be checked with all the other characters. c will be not changed to 1 because no other character is equal to s. So c will be as it is. So we are going to give another condition that if c equal to equal to 0 means we will be incrementing this unique number of characters in another variable called answer. We will be declaring answer is equal to 0. Okay, wow. So for counting the unique number of characters we are going to use this c is equal to uh, as the count and after that if unique character is formed we are going to increment that output in this answer. So S will be unique character such that it will uh, be incremented in answer as 1. Next F will be unique character so 2, G3 and H4. So the output of the program will be 4. So let's see this in program. So actually they will give the program structure. We have to write only the code. They will give the header files and the main function structure. Inside the main function we are going to write the code. So in this program we are going to use strlen function. This is defined in string.h header file. They won't declare this string.h declare file, header file in the declaration. So we have to include this in our program. So don't forget to include this, otherwise you will get an error. So what we are going to do is that we need an input as a string. So to get an input as a string, we are going to declare an array of characters. So I have named the array of characters as yes. So in that value I have given as 10,000. And for uh, additional variables, so I am going to declare this variable. So int c is equal to 0 for counting the unique number of terms and i and j as the loop variable. And answer is equal to 0 for printing the last value uh, for counting how many unique characters are there. So I am getting the input as a uh, string. So scan of percentages comma s yes, to get the input as a string. And after that I am going to traverse it using two for loops so that I can count the 
number of characters in it with its unique number of terms. So how we are going to do is that for i is equal to 0, i is less than str ln of s, i plus plus. So I am going to start with 0 and till the end of the string I am going to traverse it and another for loop inside that for loop for j is equal to 0, j is less than str ln of s, j plus plus. So I am going to include another for loop so that I can compare this a with all these terms so that I am going to include these two for loop. So in that condition I have given two if condition. So if i equal to equal to j. So here i also 0, j also 0. If i equal to equal to 0 means I am going to continue this because if any single unique character is there means for, for, for example if s is the uh, unique character here. So if s is compared with s means it will be incremented as count as 1. So I am not going to do that. So I am continuing with this. So continue will again increment the j loop so that it, uh, it goes to the next character. So j will be compared to that is 0 will be compared to 0, a will be uh, 0 will be compared to 0, it will be continued. So j plus plus again j will be incremented to 1. So i value is 0, j value is 1, it is not equal so that it comes to this. So here it uh, checks another condition. If s of i that is s of 0 is a, a is equal to equal to s, no condition gets failed so it won't go to this if condition. Again j gets incremented. So likewise it will be incremented and checks with each and every character. Here a will be equal to a uh, in this condition. If uh, j value becomes here means a will be equal to a so that it will go to this if condition. So c is equal to 1. I am changing the value of c to 1 and breaking this for loop so that it comes out of this for loop. This inner for loop is there no. So it comes out of this for loop and here I am going to out of this for loop I am going to give a condition that if c equal to equal to 0. If c equal to equal to 0 means it is an unique uh, alphabet but a is here repeated so I am not going to uh, the loop does not go inside so it again comes out c is equal to 0 and i gets incremented so s will be now checked with all the other characters. So s is an unique character so here c will be equal to 0 itself so if c equal to equal to 0 means answer will be plus plus so I am incrementing the count of this answer. So S is an unique character in this. And again next it checks with F. So F is uh, also an unique character in this. So F will be incremented and answer value will be 2 here. And after that it will be again going. So D is repeated so it won't uh, get incremented. And G is a, a unique character. So G will be incremented and now answer will be 3. And H is another unique character. So it will be incremented as 4. So A we have already checked. So it also checks and uh, it won't get incremented. So the answer count incremented will be 4. That is the output of the program. Why we are going to give this C equal to 0 means uh, we are going to check the condition and, and again and again so that how many variables are there in that. How many we are going to count how many variables are there. So that uh, after checking a single alphabet we are going to again make it to 0 so that it will be uh, incremented and uh, calculated according to the next alphabet. So this is the program and uh, your output will be successful. So the name of the second program is the lottery ticket, lucky lottery. So we have to find the shortlisted ticket based on the algorithm what they have given. So we are going to write that algorithm. So they have given that write an algorithm to select the shortlisted ticket code. They have given certain condition to select the shortlisted ticket code. The input what they have given is the number of tickets available. So the number of tickets they have given it as a uh, single row. We have to consider this as an array. What they have given the algorithm is that we have to count the number of tickets available in this. For example, ticket 1 is available occurring one times. Ticket 2 is occurring thrice. Ticket 3 is occurring thrice. Ticket 4 is occurring once. So based on what condition they are going to shortlist the ticket means if the ticket number is equal to number of times it occurred in this array means that will be your output. For example, here 1 is repeated one time. 3 is repeated 3 times. So these two are the possible conditions to shortlist the selected ticket. So in that these two conditions are same now. So what they have given the condition is that if we have to print the greater number ticket. So 1 is not 1 is not equal to 1 is not greater than 3. Okay. Well, so what which is greater 3 is greater. So 3 is printed as the output. So this is the first example what they have given. So I will explain the second example so that you will understand it better. 
So they have given n value as 10. So 10 numbers they have given. So in this ticket number saw, ticket 2 is occurring once and ticket 4 is occurring 4 times and ticket 3 is occurring 3 times, 5 1 time and 7 1 time. So in this if you see it means 4 is equal to 4. So this one satisfies and 3 is equal to 3. So this condition also satisfies. What we are going to say, select the uh, shortlisted ticket based on what? So it should be the ticket number should be greater than the other tickets. So in this greater ticket number is 4. So 4 is printed as the output. The same applies here. So 3 is greater than the ticket number 3. So 3 is printed as the output. So let's see this in program. So how we are going to write this program means, so for getting the input, so we will consider to get the input 8 as n and this is an array of integers. For that we are going to declare an n and array of integers. So int n a of 1000 I have given and for other variables, so for counting the number of integers present, so I am going to declare c is equal to 0 and for assigning the maximum, uh, val maximum ticket value, so I am going to declare max is equal to 0. So I am getting the input, so scan of percentage d and press n. So 8 will be stored in n and for getting the input as an array so I am going to do a for loop and get the input of integers as an array and after that what I am going to do is that I am going to count the number of variable number of integers present in that so I am for that I am going to use the two for loop for int i is equal to 0 i is less than n i plus plus for int j is equal to 0 j is less than n j plus plus so two for loop I am going to use for what we are going to use two for loop is that so first we are going to take this number 1. Okay, so for i is equal to 0 means 1 will be considered. For j is equal to 0, so j will be traversed uh, until this condition is met. So if 1 equal to equal to 1 means c will be incremented. So c value will become 1 now. Okay, so after that j will be incremented. So j will be uh, shifted to 1 first position. So j equal to 1. 1 is less than 8 is condition satisfied. So 1 equal to equal to 2. No condition does not satisfy again j incremented it does not go into this if condition itself next uh, it checks with next 2 it will not be satisfied next 2 it will not be satisfied next it checks with 3 and 4 the condition will not be satisfied so c value will be equal to 1 so after that this for loop gets ended so this j for loop gets ended and after that this condition will be checked in this condition what we have given is that if a of i equal to equal to c what is a of i a of i is 0th position. So 0th position is 1. 1 is equal to equal to count of this variable 1. Yes, the condition satisfies and a of i is greater than max. So a of i value is 1. 1 is greater than 0. Yes, condition satisfies. So maximum is equal to a of i. So now maximum will be stored as 1. So 1 will be stored in maximum. And after that, what we are going to do is that we will reinitialize c equal to 0. So that count will be reinitialized to 0. After that, if we are going to count the number of times, uh, how much times 2 is occurring means, so that it will be calculated correctly. So after that, 2 will be counted. So 2 will be counted and count of this 2 will be coming as 3. So 2 is not equal to 3. So condition does not satisfy. So it comes out of this uh, if function. So c is equal to 0. Next, 3 will be checked. So 3 uh, count will be 3. So 3 is equal to 3. Now it will check. So 3 is equal to 3. Condition gets satisfied. And after that what we are given and and 3 is greater than what will be stored in max 1. So 3 is greater than 1. Yes, this condition also satisfied. What we are going to do is that store 3 in max. So now max value will be changed to, to, to 3. What I have given, uh, what they have given in the condition, the ticket number should be the maximum if all the numbers becomes equal. So what we are going to do is this, uh, we are going to give this condition. A of i is greater than max means we are going to change the max value. So that ticket number 1 will be changed to ticket number 3. So that all for all the conditions, the uh, program will be satisfied. So after that, what we are going to do is that, so we are going to declare uh, if else function. So if max is not equal to 0. Why I am giving this condition means uh, they have given in the question as if none of the condition satisfies. So none of the condition satisfies with this. For example, I will give an array. So 1 is occurring twice and 2 is occurring 1 time 3, 4. So in this no condition will be satisfying with this. So none of the elements will be so for example 1 is occurring twice, uh, 2 is occurring once, 3 is occurring once, 4 is occurring once. 
none of these two terms is getting matched no for that inputs and all they uh, what they have given is that you have to print minus 1 as the output so for that i am going to give this condition if max is not equal to 0 means print as percentage d max so 3 will be printed for this output for this condition max will be equal to 0 because none of the condition satisfies so that uh, it does not go inside this if condition itself so max value will remain 0 as it is so print of minus 1 so minus 1 will be printed as the output i hope you like this video if you like this video please share with your friends and don't forget to see my previous video because in that also i have solved many programming questions and next video will be uploaded within today evening in that i am going to solve two more programming questions so to see those videos please subscribe to my channel so until then stay tuned signing off from you Bye, take care.